Hello and welcome to the Chip and Dale spoiler cast and review, not the series, the movie, from Gigaboo's Podcast Network. I'm your host, Dan Video Games, and with me is Bob. I don't track with the background well. <laughs> from Gigaboots, Dr. Agro. Cell shading is like 2D. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> from Dr. Agro. Uh, KZ. From KZXL.com. Can we get one more close-up of his human teeth? And Mr. Feel from Mr. Feel's Wild Ride. White woman moment. Well, we sure did watch Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers parentheses 2022, the feature film on Disney+. Plus. Uh, for people who have not watched one of our spoiler casts slash reviews before, what we're going to do is say a couple sentences each accompanied by some sort of mouth sound to uh, basically sum up our feelings. Then we'll go into detail expressing various uh, mental engagements with the movie and anecdotes. Uh, and then at the end, we'll give our uh, total judgment individually and our scores out of a possible of 10 points each, making it 50 as a max score. We will go ahead and start with feel. Uh, this was bad. Uh <laughs> It wasn't actively bad, but it was boring and dull, and uh, boy finding out that the director of this primarily directed Saturday Night Live episode sure made a lot of things make a lot more fucking sense. Uh, 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 I'm going to give this a... Uh. Uh, we next go to Bob. This could be literally any childhood movie you can think of. Anything based on an old cartoon. It has nothing... It, it, you could be Jim Dale. It could be Dr. Dr. DuckTales, anything. They could turn into this movie. No problem. Ugh. <laughs> uh, KZ. Thankfully, it's not the worst film that features 85,000 IPs in it that I've seen in the last year. Uh, but still, wasn't that great. I liked a couple of jokes here. Uh, it didn't cause me harm. So, uh. And Dr. Agro. This project conceptually is is sort of a necessary outcome product of the terrible society we have created for ourselves. But for as venomous as it could have been, it honestly came out kind of benign. So it's really a... Uh, I can't believe it took this long to turn uh, fake movie trailers from 2009 into entire fucking films. That are equally one joke witty, this is them in real life sort of affairs. I'm going to give this a... Uh, <laughs> and with that out of the way... Dan, Dan, what you just said is like multiple times th through this movie. I, was th I just thought, especially in one specific scene, I was like, this is like a really, really long robot chicken skit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, this is funny because as I as I had that thought about like this is this is the skit, this is the fake trailer for a movie you do sometime around 2009, 2008, maybe 2010, and you mainly have one joke, and the rest of it is this is them in <laughs> real life. Um, I sat there and thought, man, casting Andy Samberg's right on the nose. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. <laughs> well, that is because Akiva Schaefer, who directed this, directed 65 episodes of Saturday Night Live and also every single Lonely Island mm -hmm. music video. Yeah, isn't Takiva one of the members? <laughs> that explains a lot of the shot composition. I actually did not realize... Yeah, that's one of the members of Lonely Island. I didn't know his last name. I just knew Akiva. <laughs> that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I remember they promoted this with Lonely Island pretty pretty well in mm -hmm. the front forefront. That makes sense. Yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I only knew about Sandberg. I didn't even know about Akiva being involved. I just I just I just need to say this. Andy Sandberg and John Mulaney brought nothing to this. Like not have like not having the original voice actors just made this worse. Uh, I have nothing against either actor, but I completely yeah, agree. I'm, yeah, not nothing against them. It's just like they didn't bring anything unique to this. It was just like, I just multiple times I thought, wow, that would have been way funnier if it was actually Chip and Dale. No, but but they did have like they they have the chick that does one of them in a bunch of 
recent stuff. She plays a couple of different voices in this. Yeah, no, they brought the the voice actors back to not do their characters. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> what was it? You were saying Colby Jack. Wait, Monterey Jack. <laughs> yeah, yes. uh, Monterey I Jack. That's the cheese. Uh, he has a completely new voice. Uh, but his original voice was Cat from Cat Dog. And I'm not sure if most people realize this. Cat from Cat Dog played the evil cat in this. Uh, yes, in fact. And in the original show. So it's like they're here doing things. Yeah, and like uh, Gadget. the Gadget's voice actress actually voices Dale, I think, a Chipper Dale, one of the two. And she just doesn't voice them in the main thing. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, they, they slip this- into the voices here and there as a gag. And I'm like, why, why couldn't you? It's, it would be a lot funnier. Mm-hmm. It genuinely would have been. See, for me, it's, it's not even necessarily about that angle of like, they're here doing these characters and it's not doing anything for me. It's that it's they're not doing anything for me. And that only serves as a plateau for me to slip even deeper off of into the swamp that is Seth Rogen. <laughs> he did the laugh multiple the, times. This is the only movie I've ever seen where you can tell the script says Seth Rogen laughs like Seth Rogen <laughs> seven fucking times. That, that door opens this, and the dwarf comes out and my whole body went, this is where Seth Rogen shows up, right? <laughs> I, I, I visibly recoiled going, this is it. They are just hiring Seth Rogen now to do that bit this is probably why he got cast in the mario movie <laughs> i uh i i have to admit i didn't recognize sakura's that's rogan i guess i'm not damaged enough well well you see i mean i mean i have voice blindness so i didn't recognize anybody until i looked it up later but mm-hmm. there were multiple scenes where it's like okay we're gonna have seth rogan run into other animated characters seth rogan has played and they uh, will all seth rogan laugh so the yes. scene is just four seth rogan laugh, laughs in a row and i lost it yeah that what flew over my head until you said something i was like yeah i don't know why they're doing this <laughs> yeah i i started losing it going i shouldn't be laughing but this is wonderful right like when that happened i thought did somebody pitch this movie with seth rogan as Dale, and they just they didn't give it to him, so they gave him this. I, I don't know if I could get through that movie. <laughs> they, they do write Dale like very Seth Rogen esque in this. Well, he's oh, no. he's supposed to be super dumb, so like of course they did. That's that's what this <laughs> needs to be. Uh, I I I don't know how I would have dealt with that to be frank, but. <laughs> I'm kind of maybe lucky that they did it. (sighs) Oh, man. Do I even try to recap the movie? (laughs) It's It's a mystery. It's it's like, hey, Dan, can you recap a cardboard box? The movie movie can fit in like three sentences. Sure, go ahead. Okay. uh, uh, Chip and Dale, uh, this does the really lame thing that fucking everything does now where where the the characters were actors in a TV show. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so, so Dale recounts meeting Chip and, and getting the show and then he fucked everything up because he wanted to go start his own career. And then it's like 20 years later and they're depressed losers because that's the only thing Hollywood knows how to do now. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, so Dale got, Dale got CG surgery to, to reinvite, to revitalize his career. So now he's like a 3D, he's 3D CG graph cartoon, uh, uh, th- this this plot element of people getting CG surgery because because Baloo from the Jungle Book is also there, but he's like a photorealistic bear, which is one of the few kind of funny bits in this movie. <laughs> uh, this th- it would sure be a lot more effective if they had actually drawn the cartoon characters and not like drawn over 3D models of them. Oh, yeah, which is really it, obviously what they did. Like e- every 2D character in this looks like they're from a fucking Joel Haver video. Yeah, basically, <laughs> no. it is truly that dire. Expensive Joel Haver. I uh, I not that expensive. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm like saying like five thousand dollars above Joel Haver. I'm uh, not talking about like uh, this is fifty million dollars or some shit. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, uh, Dale's Dale's like doing uh conventions, trying to revitalize his career, like he's washed up. Um. Chip went and became an insurance salesman and is is a loser who lives alone with a dog. Mont- Monterey Jack, no, no, we don't know what happened to him yet, and a G- Gadget married their dog, the fly. 
and uh, had forty five kids, which which confirms which confirms that that gadget is is indeed the rodent equivalent of a white woman. Um. So so Monterey Jack calls Chip and Dale and is all anxious and shows up and oh he owes money to to the Valley Gang is that what they fuck they call yeah. it? Yeah. He owes money to the Valley Gang. And then and, and, and you, they got to help him because the Valley Gang, if you owe them money, they they uh, turn you into a bootleg cartoon character and force you to make bad movies forever, uh, which really feels like somebody in Disney's legal department was like, make the villain of this movie people who don't respect IP law. <laughs> uh, why, why is that? Do you have any reason to strike out against those people right now? <laughs> uh, it, uh, but uh, it also feels it also feels really weird to like equate bootlegging to human trafficking. Uh, what are you talking about? Pooch the honey bear is definitely just as bad as human traffic. It's not weird when you're the Disney Corporation and you equate human life with IP. I mean, you, right? <laughs> There's also definitely not a prominent character in this that that is obviously supposed to be some other character, but they couldn't legally call them that. Um. They made a joke about it, though, so that's uh, so, some... So, so uh, they talk to him, and, and, and Dale's a fuck up and tries to, like, turn it into being about him and their career, and... Yeah, and, uh, and then and, Ed and, Norton and, comes up and apologizes to Ralph Cramden, and, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> it, This fucking movie does the, does the, the buddy pairing break up, like, th three times. Yes! <laughs> yes. I instead of just where instead I of was just in the movie because of it. <laughs> yes, instead of just being this this movie also this movie really does have that problem that a lot of things we cover have where it's like where am I? What <laughs> act am I in? <laughs> uh. <laughs> because because the thing this movie does a lot is it'll introduce a mystery and then immediately solve it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely a thing to the extent where you go, when did that happen off screen? <laughs> uh, but 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 Chip fucks off and is like, Monterey Jack, if you need my help, call me. And uh, he, he gets fucking kidnapped by the Valley Gang. And the police yeah, show up and they're like, and they leave. Basically. They yeah, frame one. Yeah. <laughs> An astral heat happened off screen. <laughs> yeah. I, I like walked into the bathroom, came back and that happened. So I had to roll it back because I was confused. Uh, but but the police show up and, and they explain everything to the police. Uh, the chief of police is Sergeant Putty, who is obviously Gumby, and he's voiced by fucking J.K. Simmons. Yeah, yes. Um, J.K. Simmons, like no one told him that we're we're not like we're not doing like an animated film. You can chill. It doesn't have to be good. We're just celebrities cashing a check here. Right. Yeah. No. No one yeah, let him he, know. He, 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 uh, oh, I choose to believe he just can't give less than a hundred percent, which is respectable because we have yeah, five sorry. Seth Rogans in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, that is Seth Rogans hundred percent. He can only punch um, at thirty. <laughs> there, there's a there's a really there's a really irrelevant human sidekick character named Ellie who works for the police. Uh, I think it's really funny that it's a black lady, and I feel like that they did that explicitly because they were a cop. And I was like, hmm, we better, we better, we better hedge our bets a little bit on this one. Uh, she has like four scenes in the movie and her Roland is really stupid. Uh, God bless her. She's fucking trying, imagining she must have just been in a room with green screen and nothing else. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, a uh, room, a <laughs> green screen, nothing else but her mind remembering the script, which man. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, that, that's like fucking purgatory. Yeah. Uh, to speed things along, though, we from there it plays out like a very, very straightforward, uh, possibly uh, even lower brow than a cartoon the, for kids level of they mystery. Do, <laughs> yeah. They go yeah. with the easy thing where Monterey Jack's a drug addict because the cheese was drugs. Uh, they go to uh, they go to <laughs> they go to Main Street USA and fucking Disney work Disneyland. And talk to a parody of the Swedish chef to get into the drugged in with cheese. Uh, they give away too much and he ki he kidnaps them and takes them to the uncanny valley where everything looks like the Polar Express. Yeah. Which is uh, <laughs> one of the that, few that few that good segments up. of this movie. Yeah. The, 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 the line about like, don't give me the Polar, Polar Express, Express eyes. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> like that got me pretty good. Uh, also, the um, when they go up to the Swedish chef parody and, mm -hmm. and he immediately shifts to 
from in character to you cops. Oh yeah, I, I lost it. That was actually amazingly funny to me. But, but, yeah, between between that and the Monterey Jack thing, he's like, which is also a cheese. Pregnant, <laughs> yeah. pregnant. The paw. cut there was amazing. Also a name of cheese. Before that, when Chip is listing like the horrible things everyone does in the street, and like the little girl goes by, and he's like, Muppet fights. Yes. <laughs> I think the Uncanny Valley joke would land a lot better if this whole movie didn't look hideous. I, I know, and this is like <laughs> yeah. one of my major problems with this movie is that it is predicated on it not looking hideous based on most of the jokes it made. Like, I genuinely it, believe if they drew Chip in 2D, right? Or could even track any of the stuff. Right, if things 3D. could track in 3D space, if any number of things didn't clearly go under par. For this visually, jokes like that and other jokes would would have landed better. But this is one of the few times where I've been like, guys, you're not you're not firing on every cylinder. You can't make jokes about exploding cars. You, you, you know, you know, it's really fucked up. Mm. Um, uh, Bjornson, the cheesemonger, which is that character's name, yes, uh -huh. uh, is, is is voiced by Keegan Michael Key, which means two things in a row we've watched have had <laughs> Keegan Michael Key in them. Yeah, oh, fucking god. Yeah, I saw him in the credits and had no idea who, who he voiced. <laughs> yeah, I was also confused by that. That 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 he, he was funnier in this than he was in Pentavert. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I didn't know he was yeah. the cheesemonger. I knew, like, I I pull up the IMDb and I saw that he was the frog coworker from the insurance office that was on screen for two for, seconds. For two seconds, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> it was like, is that, like is that what you called him in to do? <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, do you want to come over to my pad? Uh. I, I also appreciate when Chip's uh, heading home near the start, and they put fucking AirPods in Chip's ears. Yeah, and that I'm was like, that was, this that is was a really right. strong visual gag. I did love when he pulled them off, and he's listening to death metal. Yeah, that was pretty fitting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an, an, like an issue with this, you, along like go, on, going on the lines of what Bob said, where it's like you can't make the joke that things look bad when everything in this movie looks bad. This movie has so many jokes about creatively bankrupt crossovers yes yeah and it's like like that that's one of the things that was like this is just an extended robot chicken sketch because that's all that's also a thing robot chicken did all the time where it's like we're making fun of this bad thing we're also doing mm -hmm. we addressed it sort of that makes it okay and i'm like yes it does in a 90 second skit <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah, like the movie as it goes on you you become more and more aware of how this is some horrific uh, intellectually creatively bankrupt late stage capitalist byproduct of culture and how you're complicit in it for watching it and we're all just sitting in this lukewarm kiddie pool together I, I had to scramble to make sure Happy Madison wasn't somehow involved in this right <laughs> That's fair. I, that's that's a fair, fair response. It, touch, it, it totally channels that arcane evil energy for of sure. Like th this is this is so everybody, all of my friends can get a check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to know. Most of the time on IMDb, you see the, like nice looking photos of the movie, like for movies mm -hmm. in general. Yeah, not this time. <laughs> Just, I, this is how the movie looks. I'm sorry. I know, <laughs> you can't fix but it. like the rest of it, it's very selective. I'm like, here's this nice frame. Here's this movie poster. Here's this trailer shot. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking at this shot here. You, if you deleted a uh, 3D Dale there and just showed me the shot, I'd be like, what Telltale game is this? Yeah. <laughs> it, <sighs> See, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, okay, what, like, what is this from? Like Epic Mickey three? Like. What is this from? <laughs> this looks like a test for a, a, a tech demo for cell shading. This doesn't ship. <laughs> I mean, it, the, the whole movie looks like a music video. It, a lit, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, the it's, boy, mm, and look who directed yeah. it. Mm. Like, you remember Bob earlier was talking about how like this wasn't a Chip and Dale script. This this was like something Ubisoft pulled out of the drawer and they just slotted in <laughs> Chip and Dale. And, <laughs> Which I think is apt because I don't think the assignment was, hey, we we want to do something with the Chip and Dale IP. I think the assignment was, hey, go rip off the Happy Time Murders. Come back with three pitches. Yeah. Uh, you know, Roger Rabbit is in this movie, and yeah. that just made me upset because I'm like, how fucking dare you? That movie is 8,000 levels above this. Right. It's not even close. This could 
yeah. hope to get there. Yeah. That movie had a mm-hmm. soul. Yeah, you stack these movies up side by side, and this movie is just a condemnation of modern c- c- civilization. <laughs> like, oh, look look how far we fucking fall. I know, yeah, right? right? God. The uh, lead guy from that Netflix series, I Think You Should Leave, was the person who was playing Ugly Sonic, and I just sit here and go, did, did they did they cast him based on him just sounding like a rude asshole and half of the skits in that? Or did they go, who's the ugliest guy we know in Hollywood who would currently take this job? Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, Dan, Dan, Dan. They, they cast him because because the director of this also directed that show. <laughs> that makes perfect <laughs> fucking sense. <laughs> that is. Oh my God. Yeah. God damn it. You have to say, this is a sloppy steak skit that wouldn't end. <laughs> oh man that checks out that also had like a few <laughs> funny bits inside this God. massive thing we watched I'm so <laughs> upset I, I didn't we wouldn't be here right now if I had known that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Goes, oh, yeah we're confident I would have been oh like oh that person made okay yeah we're just gonna just pump keeps them. getting weirder like you had already tricked into checking out. I think you should leave. Thanks to Red Letter Media pretending it was good. Yeah, they 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 brought up the sloppy steak skit, and I'm like, okay, that's probably funny. And then I watched that episode, and I'm like, well, that wasn't funny, but other parts were funny. And then they stopped doing that three episodes in. Everything else is not funny at all. And the sloppy steak uh, skit is nine minutes long and has two jokes. Oh my god! Th- th- this is this is like one. This is this movie is only one step better than if they had Jesus. let Tim and Eric make this movie. I don't know that it's better. <laughs> That's no, it's it's definitely better than that. Yeah, I mean, it's... I don't know if they, if they have to make a PG movie and thus cannot do some of their Tim and Eric things, uh, right? No, like watching Tim and Eric's content literally feels like my skin is peeling off. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, movie absolutely. was mostly benign. Yeah, that it was, but it was just boring. And then had, and then sometimes you would bite through the oatmeal and get like a little, get like a marble. Yeah, would chip your tooth. There'd be like J.K. Simmons turning around and going, "Get the battering rams," and then two rams in police vests would bunch a door open, and it's amazing. I I, I did, I did like, uh, I did like him using himself to take fingerprints at one point and shaving it off. Yeah. (laughs) Um. Uh, But. Uh, uh, let me continue talking about this horrible movie. Oh, God. <laughs> we were in the middle of the summary. Oh, the three sentence summary. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> uh, they meet fucking <sighs> Sweet Pete, who is who played Peter Pan in the movie, which is really kind of fucked up. If you know what happened, to Peter Pan's voice actor, he died alone, like homeless and drug addicted at like thirty. Yeah, oh. I, was, I was actually, I actually was going to bring that up where. This is a washed up Peter Pan, the real Peter Pan, Bobby Driscoll. A couple of years after the Peter Pan movie, just couldn't get roles anymore. Started become a druggie and just, yeah, yeah, it was not, it was not good. And I'm like, it, were they aware? <laughs> of course they were aware. They just didn't give a shit. Because, come on, yeah, I'm pretty sure you could have picked literally anyone. Yeah, yeah there's so many Disney options. Character. There's, there's in the, yeah, in the same way you brutally kidnap Flounder. I feel like you could have picked and subbed in any Disney character, maybe just actual Pete. Yeah, I, I, uh, this was possibly the least enjoyable role I've like ever experienced Will Arnett fulfilling, which is weird because I love him in a countless things. You know, he's in Rested Development, mm-hmm. Lego movie, all sorts of other crap. Yeah, he's usually really, really good. His character, I hate looking at it on screen. The lines for him aren't that great most of the time. It's weird. It's really weird. Meanwhile, JK is like firing on all cylinders the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of shocked like how good he was at what he was doing. Peter Pan has some of the absolute worst uses of CG. They have him wear a bathrobe at one point, and it's the most unbelievable thing you've ever seen on film. <laughs> it is weird watching yeah. the, the, the cell shaded characters wear CG clothing. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. <laughs> uh, so, so they talk to Sweet Pete, and he's like, uh, "No, I'm not gonna give. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I already sold Monterey Jack, and I'm also gonna sell you too." Uh, so they said they have to escape. They run from his fucking minions, who is like a Lord's Lord of the Rings esque dwarf, voiced by fucking Seth Rogen, who I guess is from Beowulf. I guess that's what he's supposed to be. I, from. I think he's from one of the Hobbit movies because they had they had some really weird, like Billy Connolly was in it, CG'd up, and he looked like that. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that that last Hobbit movie fucking sucked. <laughs> It's like they're usually really good in the Hobbit movies about just using perspective and not. Oh no, you're thinking of the Lord of the Rings yes. movies. <laughs> yes, I am. Because I've only seen the first Hobbit movie. <laughs> uh, Three so Hobbit they escape, movies. <laughs> they escape and try to get help from the police, and the human sidekick Ellie is like, "The police can't help you, especially me, because I I fucked up once and we raided Nickelodeon Studios and and bad things happen and dogs ate a guy's balls." So, <laughs> Specifically, uh, Nick Junior Studios. <laughs> Uh, but but if you sneak in if you sneak into S- Sweet Pete's gay bathhouse and steal his eye his uh, eye watch his Apple Watch, uh, we can trace where he goes and find out where he does his evil shit. I think it was supposed uh, to be a Fitbit that had GPS for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> that was weird. I don't think they have GPS, but maybe I'm an idiot. Well, they never yeah, named it. Just yeah, as I have one of like, those things. Yeah, they had a thing where it's like, hey, we should. Yeah, I just used Apple Watch as like a whatever. generic outfit, generic version of it. Uh, they have they have to like rap for a snake so he doesn't eat them. Uh, yeah. and and there is a bit where Chip where Chip is like it's always pathetic when like old cartoon characters have to rap. Yeah, because they, and I'm they like showed... you sure you sure made that a joke and then did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they it's... made it a joke also in the very beginning when they're like let's show you footage of the Alvin and the Chipmunk movie. Yep, and I was also disappointed by this because. I saw that Elvin check missing at the beginning. I knew this was produced mm-hmm. by Lonely Island. I was like, maybe they'll get to the point where they have to rap and it will actually be good. But instead, it's Dale Whale, Dale Whale, Dale Whale, Dale Whale. Won't eat a whale. Yeah, it's like you literally just intentionally made the worst thing possible. And Thank I'm like, you. That's, that's really when I hit the moment of Sandberg's perfect for this. <laughs> it's one <laughs> joke. And it keeps oh, going. Oh. Yeah. Even as a fan of the Lonely Island, I would have to be blind and deaf to not realize most of their career is one joke for four minutes. <laughs> yes. Like the that's, semicolon that song. That, that's fine <laughs> for four minutes. Right? Right. <laughs> the problem is when it's 95. <laughs> uh, uh, they get Pete's fucking fitness tracker and they go to the, they go to a dock warehouse and find the shit where they uh, they remodel tunes into bootlegs. It's like a fucking giant MRI machine. Uh, by the way, we're 40 minutes into this movie at this point. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Which is what I mean about us being lost. Uh, there's a really bad action set piece. Wait, is that later? No, that's later. That's later. That's the next time they visit this uh, location. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, you're I getting fu- lost. <laughs> I, are you- I fucking... Wait, is it later? Yeah, no, no, I don't think it, it is. Now. I it's can't. Now. I mean, I'm so sorry you now. volunteered to try and summarize this I mean, this movie. What, what do you define as action set piece? Knocking down the door? Where, where, the laser No, thing. where they're trapped in, where they're trapped in oh, the machine okay. as it's trying to remodel them. That's this point. Yes. Because they yes. like, we need a scene. So they accidentally get put in the remodeling machine and have to do the fucking factory scene from Attack of the Clones, except, except worse and shot worse, which seems... which is like jesus christ and uh then they're then they find out that Mo- that monterey jack was already worked on and taken somewhere else oh no he's just but, taken but overseas it, it, oh no we're, we're 45 minutes into this movie all, all the uh, all these characters are, are are trapped including jimmy neutron and sora kingdom hearts they stole someone's <laughs> art off tv and art and and cut out the hair and put it in a bag and i'm like <laughs> And I thought it was going to be a background shot because I had that spoiled through through me on Twitter. It's like, no, they hold on that. I'm like, man, you're very confident in your art theft. Uh, they they get declared heroes because they they uh, broke up. They found the the b- hidden base of this human trafficking op- op- operation, and they go to the police station and have the second of three breakups in the movie. <laughs> Uh, and then they smell Monterey Jack's horrible cologne, which was earlier in the movie. They mentioned that he wears the horrible Chippendale cologne. And they like go pe- either like peanuts and gasoline. Uh, either Captain Putty or Ellie is actually working with the villains, and they both assume it's Ellie. And there's like a really weird thing that I guess is supposed to be a reference to gatekeeping, where they're like, she probably doesn't. He's probably never even watched it, our show, because she pretends because she said she was a huge fan. Uh, but she couldn't name her favite episode, and she's like, "My grandparents taped recorded it for me. the shows and, 
and taped it for me because they're like, you were in Albany. They, we didn't air the show in Albany. Which seems weird. I mean, I took that honestly at face value. I'm like, yes, this is a children's movie level mystery clue. Okay, that's what we're yeah. doing. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> then they're like, we need to talk to the FBI because when the police can't help, the FBI can't. <laughs> So they have to go to FanCon and get the FBI contacts from Ugly Sonic, which I don't, I, I, I don't even remember the fucking correlation there. Is it just because well, people earlier, hate him? He has a show. Yeah, earlier he said he was going to have a show where he works with the FBI on oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, oh, ugly Sonic, uglier crimes. Oh, my God. It's like the, um, <laughs> Tell me you wouldn't watch the that. A&E show where Steven Seagal's like, I work as a cop in North Carolina now. Watch my journey. Oh, God. So they go there. The bad guys show up because Dale posted on social media they were going there. They fucking run around and jump through the thing, and Chip ends up in the same outfit because they run through an Indiana Jones like cosplay shop. And if you're uh, looking for the part of this movie that has all the Seth Rogans, that would be right now. <laughs> it also has every other single thing you can think of. I mean, that's the whole movie. They had a sign for Senator Butthead earlier in the movie. Yeah. Everything is in this. <laughs> yeah. Stan Marsh yeah. is in this. Oh, or, yes. or Randy Marsh. Yes, Randy Marsh is in this in the bathhouse. Uh, they, they capture Chip. And then take him to the warehouse, and then and then Dale has the fucking self pity moment where he he has the the Seth Rogen esque epiphany, where he's like, I guess I am a dumb fat fuck up. That's in every that's in every single Seth Rogen movie. Uh, the villains also captured Ellie, and because uh, the the actual traitor is Captain Putty. Uh, so <laughs> I've got to admit, I loved that they do that. And they're like, yeah, we're just copping out and doing this again. It's it. I actually did enjoy the dialogue there of like, well, remember when you came to me and you said I should team up with you for this? What did I say? That'd be uh, really predictable. And, and people could see that coming. Exactly. So then we did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like losing it as they keep drilling in on. Yeah, literally, you're the first person they would look to for collusion. They, there's, for some reason, I actually like the most of the finale of this movie. I feel like it's actually firing on all cylinders with some of the jokes. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yes, there I, is I'm that moment. You. I believe Ellie's like, you're better than this. And he goes, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. I mean, I think a lot of the strength of this is you, you get to see JK go mask off, right? Yeah. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the best part in this movie is JK Simmons. So, of course, the ending that is a ton of him. Is really good, especially when he has to start impersonating Cat Dog, and then they Cat from Cat Dog, and then they run into the evil cat that head on Aladdin that's being played by Cat from Cat Dog, and I'm like, there's just so much going on. <laughs> what wasn't like it, I'm Pete? Falling. It was Pete, wasn't it? Like Pete from King, like Pete. No, I was gonna say Pete from Kingdom Hearts. He was Pete he from, Pete from, from, uh, he was like Pete, from Cat Dog. It was Pete's head on Aladdin talking to evil cat, which was played by Pete <laughs> on the bad guy. So it's Will Arnett impersonating Cat from Cat Dog while talking to Cat from Cat Dog, and I'm having a stroke. <laughs> Because this hit me harder than any of the 10 billion references throughout the movie. Because Will Arnett's trying to sound like him. <laughs> That's the most insane shit you've ever said in a podcast. This is yeah. the peak of the cat from Cat Dog arc. <laughs> Dan, Dan, I want, the, I need this shit in our quotes when this comes. <laughs> let, Just let, you're let, trying let. to play a nightmare. It was. <laughs> This is, I had a fever and went to sleep and had this fucked up dream level of screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Uh, Dale go. Dale needs help to save everybody. He gets in contact with Gadget and Zipper and they build like a version of the fucking blimp from the show and Gadget tells a joke about how they didn't write anything for her for this movie because she's in it for like five minutes. Yeah. And it was like, unlike... I'm shocked she was in it at all. Unlike other people, I'm exactly like I was in the show. 
It also, she's the worst looking one of the CG or like cell shade oh, characters yeah. by a lot. Cause they oh, do yeah. that. You could hands. like from, from the first shot with when they were like flashing back to the show to that, you could feel like, okay, guys, like they got all the animators in the room. This is the whole talent pool. They're like, who wants to work on a Chippendale show? And everybody's like, I like a paycheck and they raise their hands. Who really wants to draw a gadget hack wrench? And a bunch of people raise their hands. All of you leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody left. Have you ever seen Chippendale? And I'm like, uh, kind of, okay. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to draw this female rat in exactly <laughs> these proportions wearing only this outfit. Are we clear? <laughs> Are you do saying... Do not misunderstand the assignment. <laughs> Are you saying you couldn't trust people who want to draw Gadget to do that? <laughs> That's a strange <laughs> assertion. Why would you say such a thing? <laughs> And in fact, I would say that cowardice goes a long way to explaining why this is bad. <laughs> Fair. Because <laughs> instead of being for anyone, it's now for no one. <laughs> oh, fuck. So the, the, there's the big action set piece. Ellie fights Captain Putty in a scene that, that gave me the strongest robot chicken vibes. Like, it's just it's just a robot chicken yeah. skit. Yeah, but it was also the best scene in the movie. <laughs> Where she's like, keep she like keeps shredding him, but he's just Gumby, so he just sticks himself back together. Like at one point, she shoves like a fish cage through him, like a cheese grater, uh -huh. and he's just like, no, no, that, that no, that doesn't do anything to, for, to me. Yeah, the, the scene is just constantly remaking scenes from Terminator Two. Yes, it's yes. great. It was unbelievably yeah. good. I was like, they did better for <laughs> Terminator representation in this than any of the IPs they own or licensed. <laughs> yeah, right. This is a hundred percent better Terminator parody than any sort of Chip and Dale parody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. In fact, why didn't they just make Gumby kills people? The movie. <laughs> right? It's almost like they would have signed off on that. <laughs> Dale saves Chip from the bootlegging machine and Sweet Pete falls into it and turns into a big monster that has the evil cat from Chip and Dale's head. They rampage through all the other bootleg sets. Oh my god, I was so fucking mad that that happened to him the week after I had to learn about Combo Man. <laughs> right? <laughs> See, see, they should have they should have made an after credit scene where Sweet Pete tries to get into NFTs. <laughs> so that so they have a big set piece where they chase him through all the bootlegs being filmed, which includes like which includes the Winnie the Pooh thing, which seems really fucking on the nose considering that I think that went public domain the day this launched. Yes. <laughs> Uh, they they defeat him at the end with a callback, and then Ugly Sonic shows up yet again with the FBI to arrest everybody. And they do the thing where where he tries to shoot Chip, but Dale jumps in the way, and he thinks Dale is dead. But Dale was saved by a thing Chip gave him earlier in the movie, a collectible pog. Oh yeah, because he had the, he didn't have the full set. That was the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then everybody reunites, and Ellie is is now has her confidence back and can open her own detective agency. And uh, they're like, we're going to reboot Rescue Rangers. And then uh, and then in, in something that really upset me, the credits show a Fast and the Furious style Rescue Rangers <laughs> reboot with with uh, with uh, Vin what Diesel. is his name? Vin, well, yeah, with Vin Diesel in it. And I'm like, why didn't you make that? Because <laughs> that would have been I funny. Made that. blacked out. I was, you, I'm like, you showed me perfect media just now. What the fuck is wrong with you? And instead, we have to make the same movie we've seen a hundred times. <laughs> I'm like, come on, that would have been so great. The, the fat cat would team up with The Rock. I, <laughs> or or Jason Statham, it would have been great. Yeah, uh, I gotta bring up something, because uh, they freed all the bootlegs, right? Right. All the people uh, yeah. who haven't been bootlegged. And they had Bambi that was blue, and I just went, that's a Pokemon. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you're, you're fifth gen legendary right there. Good I was, job. I was, about to say, I was about to say, if it's pink, it's just that one Pokemon. <laughs> I don't remember the name of it, a deerling or something. <laughs> Uh, so to cover the very, very ending stuff, they go, they make the joke about now we just need a popular singer to do a super serious version of our theme song. Or, or, yeah, or, yeah, we'll do a serious they, version instead of the original that everybody wants to hear. And then they do that over credits. And then the very last joke in the movie is them making fun of people who like Darkwing Duck. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I, I, I laughed. I'm like, I do like Darkwing Duck enough. I, 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 I. 
I think a Darkwing Duck movie has more merit than what I just watched. So I thought that I mean, was yes. the, well, the bottom Dan, of the fucking barrel. Dan, a Darkwing Duck movie would just be the same movie. Because this is the only movie they wanted to make. But here's the thing, yeah, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> here's the thing. What's up? Okay. Darkwing Duck's actor being Darkwing Duck would give it a different core personality at the center of the movie mm -hmm. instead of a Seth Rogen type. <sighs> yeah. So, so even then, I think it would go better. But <laughs> make jokes about Darkwing Duck fans. <laughs> Love Get Dangerous. I actually, after watching this one, watched an episode of the original show and an episode of Darkwing Duck. Okay. <laughs> Darkwing Duck was definitely better. Uh, than the movie or than Chip and Dale? Than Chip and Dale. I, I retroactively, from my, you know, from me watching it decades ago, agree. I <laughs> probably need to go reassess that, but I think that's correct. I mean, that, that, yeah, that's pretty much settled canon. Darkwing Duck just rules. Yeah, um, no, it's great. Also, it just made me upset that I, because I wanted to see Chip and Dale like actually get a real movie and not this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no shit. It, <laughs> oh yeah, of it, course. There, there's this new thing going on where like a company will give one thing a really great revival, and then give another thing they own that's in like the same wheelhouse. This shit. Yeah, like Ducktales had that. Good yeah, revival. I was gonna yeah, say. Yeah, Ducktales. Yeah. Ducktales had that, and then and then they got this. And it's like we, we we just needed an IP to stick on this shitty crossover script. This is when uh, if this was a video video instead of just a thumbnail with a podcast, I would cut from the lullaby scene from DuckTales to Seth Rogen's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love that we keep going back to that because it truly was the point where the most joy was being extracted from me. <laughs> I uh I just you know you, you audience you don't need to see this one because feel summarized in three sentences but more importantly <laughs> because movies three sentences or twenty eight minutes you just if you've seen Detective Pikachu imagine that but way stupider <laughs> and it's a trailer made in two thousand nine that's fake it's supposed to be clever or gritty turned into a whole ass movie yo this, cool <laughs> this really has the energy of. A TV movie, a, a TV movie specifically that they want to be able to cut into episodes later. Mm. It, it just had that same wander through the desert type of pacing where it's like uh, uh, we, we have like four second hacks. Yeah, there wasn't like a through yeah. line. There was just like, OK, we're making a Chippendale movie. Who's got ideas? And they had like six plot points in the pitch meeting and they went, OK, we'll just do those in what order? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, you could literally, and this is how I would suggest watching this. Okay. <laughs> watch the first 20 minutes. Get the general setup. Watch the ending, the last, like, 15 minutes. <laughs> You're probably good. Whatever game yeah, shows up, there is just a lot of this watch. movie where nothing happens. <laughs> yeah, I forget, does the last 15 minutes have Seth Rogen laughing? Because that's a critical part of the film. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I, uh... So about how their performances didn't really bring much to the main two or anything at all. Yeah, you could have replaced John Mulaney as Chip uh, with like, I, I, I don't know, Kelsey Grammer. And I think <laughs> Holy shit. I think that would have done something. Would give an automatic eight if that happened. Automatic eight. It's like locked the fuck in. I think that would have helped a lot. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. The, the, what we got did not bring anything to those characters. No. It. It's always insane to do like a like a reboot or a sequel type thing like this and then recast everybody because it's like I'm not a these aren't those characters now like you I, I understand that everybody in every executive in Hollywood has a fucking spike in their brain and, and seems to think that seems to think seems to think that if it's animated like no human being no human people just get attached to imagery and nothing else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's like no, if it if it doesn't have the voice, it's not recognizably the same character. Yeah, which it's is a lot of fine the, if you're mm. rebooting it, but you weren't. This was like a nostalgia pandering sequel, and every single person is just some SNL guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever this is, um, whenever they go back and they're like, "We're gonna make a film based on an IP. We're gonna take these old characters," and they're like, "We got comedians or known celebrities," and I'm like, "You've already like." You fucked up before you've started for me. Where I'm like, come on. 
<laughs> they're <laughs> active. These, these voice actors do these characters now all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> going back to this, like going back to the old show, Chip and Dale, yeah. and finding out, wait, Gadget is the one who's supposed to build stuff. Why did they give Gadget, or why did they give Gadget's job to Chip and Dale in Kingdom Hearts? What's wrong with them? <laughs> They probably never brought that show over. <laughs> it, it is incredibly funny that they like in Kingdom Hearts to pretend that Chip and Dale are some of the strongest scientific minds in the universe <laughs> instead of Gadget. I, I do love how, like, as, as you were saying, they just brought in a bunch of SNL guys, and you know, you you kind of you feel you feel the negative emotions when they're plastered onto and ruining these characters, but then. Off in the corner in one little scene. Oh, look, there's Chris Parnell. Beautiful and immaculate as always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like th- Chris Parnell as his agent was like the one positive of this being an SNL thing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how is this the only scene? <laughs> Again, watch those last 15 minutes. It's great. <laughs> He's he's not wrong. The last fifteen minutes are the best stuff in the movie. It includes my fever dream about Cat for Cat. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Also, in a, pull, pull up in another tab. Uh, just looping Seth Rogen laughing, and you got the entire film that's, just condensed. I mean, that's true. Uh. It literally. Uh, <laughs> it's. I've never heard an actor imitate themselves <laughs> and sound so much like a deep fake. I know, <laughs> like that scene was that, a lot to deal with. <laughs> That's what's called range. Uh, mm. I guess. <laughs> <sighs> um, yeah. Does anyone have any other anecdotes to bring up before we wrap? In the very start of the, the of the narration, where uh, Sandberg's talking about, like, or rather, he says, "When I say Chippendale, what's the first thing you think of?" I swear to Christ, I was just being a dick. <laughs> And I yelled Thomas Chippendale at my screen. <laughs> you knew it. Oh, no. That joke was for you. No. I was I, when, when they were like this person. I'm like that's that's aggro. Aggro's making that Burn joke in hell right now. I have been making that fucking joke for years. See, this is why you need to watch the first twenty minutes. <laughs> when I saw that, I'm like. This is almost aggro, but I feel like it's too low hanging even for him. No, no, I just don't know. <laughs> no, certainly not. I'm sorry. This is just me jacking off. Um, <laughs> so, so I guess to balance the scales here, I, I should sure. admit. Yeah. In Monterey Jack's apartment. Yeah. When the cops are going through it, there, uh-huh. there's a scene where over over Chip's shoulder, there's like a poster. Yes. That it, it looks like a, like one of those '80s Patrick Nagel prints with neon on it, mm. but it's you know it's a mouse instead of a woman in exercise clothing. Yeah. Um, I straight up want that poster. It looks dope as hell. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I have one thing. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> What's up, Bob? Do they actually refer to the, that last pog that uh, saves Dale's life is a uh, slammer or not? No. They, d- they, they do not call it a slammer. Yeah, they just they, call it part of the pog set. Cowards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's clearly a slammer. It's made yeah. of metal. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you're not wrong. I I liked that MC Scat Cat was in it for a second. That gave me a stroke. Oh my god! Yeah, that's the a- a- animated cat from uh, what was it, Mariah Carey music video? What? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Um, opposites attract. The opposites attract music video. It was uh, her fucking that cat, MC Scat Cat. It was great. <laughs> I think it was Paula Abdul, not Mariah Carey. Okay, thank you. Opposites attract, yeah. But, but, yeah. but I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. And then, and then they were like, oh, we just put everything every, we, we could even plausibly put in this in this. It, that, it wasn't actually a sign of anything that this movie was about. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was funny that uh, Chip, that Chip's dog is giant because he's a little chipmunk and lives in a chipmunk-sized house. Yeah. Yeah, I like seeing them contend with stuff like that or Dale using a human car. Yes, that that was the best part of the some stuff is big and some stuff is not. Where he's like, mm-hmm. you know, they make chipmunk sized cars. I, I I liked that. <laughs> I liked that Chip moved to a gated community because he became a white collar worker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sounds like people are ready to wrap. Uh, you know what? We'll start with aggro. <sighs> 
in much the same way uh, that the cube from the movie The Cube was just sort of oh. a, a, a an intentionless product of of a bureaucracy of society gone wrong. I think this movie was inevitable. No one decided to make it. There were just <laughs> algorithms and financial pressures in place that resulted in this film. And in that circumstance, I think that a lot of very brave people tried their hardest to get in the way of it and mitigate the damage that it could have done. <laughs> so um, I'm going to give this movie like a four. Okay. And try to like, I don't know find out who those people were and build them a small memorial. <laughs> uh, next, we go to uh, Mr. Feel. This was mostly benign. It was just dull. There wasn't a lot of parts that stick in my memory as looking cool or being especially funny. Uh, it mostly seemed to be a collection of thing of, of background gags that they decided to make a movie to use. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um but but there is like just enough shittiness in it where it's like uh, once again Hollywood doesn't care about fucking voice actors. The thing with Peter Pan's voice actor is really fucking gross especially when you consider that uh they really heavily modeled the animation back then on the voice actor's face. Meaning that a lot of this is based on the actual person. Uh and and just and just as as we found out doing this that it might just be the SNL crew money laundering checks through <laughs> Disney. Uh, I'm going to give this like a four. Okay. Uh, we'll go to Bob next. Yeah, this whole thing is clearly bad, but it's not as horrible as it could have been. I still enjoyed some scenes. So I'm going to give it a five because it's, it's better than the Halo show from what I watched. <laughs> <laughs> that's about all i've got i don't know i haven't gone back yep. for that sex scene <laughs> yeah um. mm -hmm. <laughs> that nut might raise it three points who knows no one knows <laughs> yeah no one's brave enough to go and look uh kz of course no one's brave enough those are hour-long episodes <laughs> there are limits to ironic watching uh yeah this was fairly like average for a lot of it, uh, but it had some jokes that I did actually enjoy. I, I did like that climax and some of the bits that they did. Um, and I'm looking at my other scores, and that helps give me perspective on stuff where it's like, do you like it better than that? Yes. Yes. And uh, I like it better than Free Guy, I guess. So I'll give it a six. Sure. I probably will never watch it again, but uh, for this one time, I guess it was okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm really not a fan of this. Uh, there were some g jokes buried in nonstop references that didn't fire a single neuron, like Senator Butthead. Uh, imagine three <laughs> three hundred things on the screen at any point in time that were that. Um, I it's so hideous. If it wasn't so hideous, I could score it higher. But it's just. It's making jokes about hit it, like, oh man, remember when 3D used to look bad? And I'm like, motherfucker, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you just crawled out of a cardboard box that you live in on the street corner to walk into someone else's home to say, bitch, you live like this. I, I'm, I'm gonna give this a three. I, I just, I can't. <laughs> it's so awful. <laughs> it, uh, well, that's what's fair. wrong? Seth Rogen laughed. That gave two point buff on my score. <laughs> it's just shocking how hideous it is. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings the total score up to twenty two out of a possible fifty, and the average score to a four point four, which. I guess, you know, we should be optimistic. It's a Chip and Dale movie <laughs> made by Lonely Island people. <laughs> hey, that's seven times higher than the last thing we watched. That is true. We broke through zero, which is pretty good. With a main character whose name is Ugly Sonic. It did way better than you would expect based on those things. Yes. <laughs> All I know is I'm really tired of dumbling, tumbling down this stairwell of bad streaming content. 
Well, it's a shame uh, yeah. they announced 80 million things in the past couple. Of if years. people could just pump their brakes, that would be great. No. Uh, I want to thank you for listening to this, though. Uh, go check out our other spoiler cast. We got a playlist. Bye. This month's Gigaboots videos were brought to you by the continued support of our executive producers, such as Esme, E. Lee Broyles, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, Burning Pepsi Man, Adam Admar, Cooper Tank, and Virmvarm. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these gamers. If you want to support Gigaboots so we can continue the content crunch, then head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.